Scott for joining us this morning. Uh, Seth Davies is our speaker as usual. Um, Seth will be delivering a session today on creating a continuous improvement culture. The what, the how, and the want to. Thanks a lot for joining us again today, Seth. Take it away. Thanks, Connor. Let me add my welcome to everyone this morning that has joined us on uh, this webinar. For me, the, the key word and the title of this presentation is culture, creating a continuous improvement culture, because what I see many times and what my firm sees many times when we visit organizations is that many times continuous improvement is simply an, an initiative. It's something that an organization decides to do. They assign the responsibility to one or two people. And what happens over time is that it's not sustainable. That, that continuous improvement will not continue after the, the initial initiative because there's not processes in place. And, and I was at an organization recently, and there was uh, banners in the, in the back talking about creating a continuous improvement process. And I asked about it, and one of the two people that was in charge of that, that initiative and had left the organization, and unfortunately everything else that, that had been set up around continuous improvement left when when he left. So we're going to talk about creating a culture of continuous improvement and talk about the ability to, to sustain what you've, what you've started, what you'll continue on within your organization. And let's be honest, what organization today can't sit there and say, well, we could do a better job um, managing our people, we can do a better job with communication, we can do a better job on accountability, and we really, we could use some better business results. Every organization would raise their hands and say yes. We can get better in all areas, all facets of our organization with that. Uh, real quick, uh, before I jump into the, the presentation over, I'm going to talk about some of the, as we talk about the sustainability and creating that culture, I'm going to talk about, you heard me talk about the word process-based leadership, but that's a methodology we have here at Competitive Solutions, which we see good in organizations to help create that culture uh, and that culture of sustainability of it. And, and here in Atlanta in November, we've had uh, some requests from some folks to have workshops around uh, creating the culture within the organization. So you'll be getting more information on that if you're interested uh, later on today. The agenda, here's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the what, some misconceptions that I see that my company sees. We're going to talk about how. We're going to talk about some fundamental tools that you can implement into your organization uh, to, to drive that, that continuous improvement culture mindset, the want to the need to create that buy-in with that. And how do we create the buy-in, not only at the, at the senior leaders within an organization, not only at the middle managers, but all the way down to the folks down on the shop floor. How do we create that buy-in with that? The outcomes, how do we have the lasting uh, effects that we've made, the change we've made in organizations? And at the end, I want to just share with you some testimonials that over the last uh, three, four months we re received from some of the clients that we've worked with, just talking about how is they've made this journey of continuous improvement, they've made this journey to change the culture in the organization, some of the gains that they have seen within their organizations along the way. So let's talk about the what what. When I talk about the company culture, I'm talking about the organization's values, the visions, the norms, the systems, and the beliefs. It's really about how we do what we do, or how do we do business within our organization. That's really the, the culture of the organization. It's incumbent upon the leaders to really set the, set the path forward for creating that culture within the organizations. Because what I've, what I've read in, in, in numerous books and in magazines is that money will get someone in the door of your organization, but it's the culture of the organization that keeps them there. So if someone doesn't like the culture of the organization, they're going to more than likely leave. And the cost of an employee leaving the organization is tremendous today because then you have to go out and find someone new um, and, and train them and, and hire them and get their skill level where it needs to be on that. Continuous improvement, long-term approach to systematically achieve incremental changes in processes to improve efficiency, quality, operational performance. Continuous improvement equals continuous and change. And what I'm talking about there is once we're done with one continuous improvement project, we got to look for the next one. What's the next thing that we can do to drive better business results within our organization with that? Uh, Connor had mentioned uh, at the beginning that we were going to do some polls during our time together. So Connor, if you would uh, launch the first poll of the day and just get a sense of, of our participants on the webinar today, what's some of the continuous improvement methods they're currently utilizing in their organization? Okay, we'll give everybody about 10 more seconds. 
<clears throat> okay. And we'll share the results here. So it looks so uh, lean is, is number one there, and then Kaizen is number two, and then the results of our poll uh, this morning with that. So let's now talk about change and, and, and the unknowns. And, and what I see in organizations is the number one reason that a lot of initiatives, a lot of things fail to, to be successful is because we don't share, we don't tell our employees what's going on. Here's why we're doing it. Here's the business case for it. Here was the, the, the decisions points behind that. I believe leaders need to provide the what. Here's what we're going to do. Here's why we're going to do it. Then leave it up to the employees to provide the how. The employees are closest to the business. So let's educate them. Let's um, uh, minimize the amount of anxiety they may have when they hear the word change, that we're going to have to make you know, change management or change things around here. Let's talk about share with them why are we doing that. What do we need to? What do they need to know so they can be feel comfortable and successful in doing things? So by minimizing the unknowns, the employees can then create that buy-in, that ownership, to accelerate that change. Because the, the change that you see with, within your business, that's going to be made down by the folks down on the you know the lowest level, your frontline folks, whether it's frontline customer service people, folks on the shop floor. That's where you're truly going to see the incremental improvements in performance because they're the ones that are closest to the business. They're the ones that are driving that change within the organization. Let's talk about some misconceptions that I see. My firm sees only for managers continuous improvement. Absolutely not. It goes back to what I just said on the previous slide. Everyone's got to be involved in it. From the senior, senior leadership setting the vision, setting the, the strategic plan of creating this culture, down to the, to the managers, down to the folks at the, on the shop floor, your associates. Really, they're the ones um, that, that can bring the change with that. Another one that I see is a hey, quick deployment, quick results. Folks, it is a marathon. It is not a sprint as we do this going forward. So keep in mind that you know, you're know you not necessarily going to have those quick hits, those quick results. You've got to invest the time. You've got to invest the effort knowing that the payoff will come for you. One and done project based. Absolutely not. Once the once project's done, I want people looking for the next one. What's the next way we can get better? I want there to be a list of, of project of continuous improvement projects, things that that need to happen that can bring high value dollars to the organization. And then there's a belief out there the squeaky wheel gets your gets the grease. Well let's look at what's the root cause of it. Let's do the root cause analysis to see what the issue is and that's where we need to put our efforts and our energy is tackling that issue. Going after that, and that's that's the big hit right there. That's the success that you'll see. Uh, within your organization. Um, Connor, poll number two, please, real quick. All right, 10 more seconds for you. Okay, Seth, here you go. We'll All right. Share the results. Mixed, mixed, uh, mixed response on that one. Some various, various responses there on that. Looking at um, only deploying um, and so forth. So doesn't fi fix it when it isn't broken. All right, so let's move on to talk about the what and, and how we see um, innovation. Innovation is required. Set some, set some parameters for your employees. Uh, one organization, they call it freedom within fences. Set some parameters, some, some, a box, so to speak, to give your employees work on so that they, they don't stray too far, but encourage that innovation. There, there's some talented people out there that can really bring about some great ideas, some, some better business results with that. And we need to also develop, you know, the what's next. Once we've had that, that first success, Let's build upon that success and say, hey, what's the next thing we can do? What's the next area that we can get better on? And then sustaining the improvements. Sustainability is, is a big mantra you'll hear me talk about. It's, it's got to become a cultural thing within our organization, this continuous improvement mindset, so it's not a one-and-done type uh, situation. 
the want to when it comes to creating a continuous improvement culture, you know, the desire, the motivation to do it, you've got to create that ownership. You've got to create that buy-in with your employees of, hey, we can do better. Let's look at ways that we can get better with an organization. And then that motivation comes from, one, the clear direction of a clearly just stated goal and objective, the empowerment to act, creating the, goes back to what I talked about before, leaders provide the what and the why. The employees, the teams, they provide the how, they're empowered to do things. And then allow them to go out and do that. But then the key also is we got to provide that recognition. And we're going to talk about later today about creating a culture of recognition, but recognizing teams and individual employees for achieving phenomenal results as a, because of this continuous improvement process. Sustain with standardization, participation from leaders. The leaders need to set some standards. You know, some standard processes around communication, or some standard tools around scorecards and accountability, but they also must participate. This isn't, you know, when we talk about this, it goes back to what I talked about before. This is organization wide. This isn't one or two people in the in the in the continuous improvement department driving this. This is the senior leaders, whether it's the site manager, whether it's the vice president. They're participating in this culture of continuous improvement and looking for ways and providing support so that this can happen. The how that we see, we're going to talk about processes, systematic series of actions resulting in predictable, repeatable end. And the processes we're going to talk about, they're visible. You've got the ability to audit these processes, to, for one, for compliance, to ensure that these processes are being utilized across the organization. It's not a... Uh, uh, a volunteer thing where some folks can, can make the decision to participate, some folks can make the decision to opt out. We need to audit to ensure that there's consistency across our organization with that. We also need to make sure that, that it goes back to what I just said, consistently apply for all, it, it, everyone in the organization, and it becomes the operating system. Company that we work with, they call it their corporate philosophy. Their continuous improvement is called their corporate philosophy of how we do it here. This is how we do business uh, within the organization on that. So senior leadership, they come up with the tools, the processes. When it comes to the scorecards, they come up with a template, the action register. They're involved in the, in the design and the participation of that. We've got tools and, and standard tools and processes to support this, and this helps that continued de development of the culture of, of over time evolving the organization to where it needs to be within the organization. So the tools we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about tools and processes, but the tools that we're going to talk about first are around scorecards and the action register. And in Competitive Solutions, we believe every team needs to have a scorecard in place. A scorecard, that is the templates developed by the leadership team. I'll show you a picture of a scorecard in a minute. But then that's cascaded throughout the organization. So teams at the lower levels have got their DNA built into that scorecard. But three benefits of having a scorecard within your organization, one, it educates. It educates the workforce. It provides that common business language. So when we talk about budget variance, when we talk about reducing defects, we talk about improving customer service or improving response time, everyone knows what we're talking about. We've got that common business language throughout the organization. So when someone goes to look at a scorecard, they immediately know what that metric means and how it relates to the business and how it impacts the business. Next thing that the, the scorecard will do for you, facilitate. It will facilitate meaningful discussions among teams, among employees, among managers and leaders. It will facilitate meaningful meetings. Because if you think about it, at the end of the day, what's the only thing you have in common at your organization with the people you, you work with? It's the business. So with our time together, let's focus on what we have in common not in conflict. And by having that scorecard visible and in front of us, we've got the ability to have meaningful discussions around the business and around business performance. And then the third thing that scorecard will do, it will motivate the workforce. There's a company that I've worked with uh, for several years in North Carolina, and they have got the scorecards for, for the entire site posted at the employee entrance Monday morning. So when folks come in Monday morning, they look at the scorecard for the site and then look at the scorecard for their team. And if they look at their scorecard for their team and they see a lot of red on their scorecard and they're the reason the organization is not performing as well, it's going to motivate them. But also something else happens. Those silos that you see many times in organizations, they get broken down. You've got best practice sharing. You've got 
teams coming together in, in diagnosing performance and talking about, hey, we had the same issue a month ago. Here's what we did differently. So that scorecard will really motivate the workforce to drive that continuous improvement, to create that desire to get better within the organization. So let's take a look at a, a scorecard itself. And what I'm showing you here is a, a scorecard. This is a uh, screenshot from a software that we have called PBL Scorecard that many of our client companies utilize uh, to, to manage their metrics, to manage their communication, their accountability. But you'll see they're very visible. Within five to seven seconds, one can look at it to know, are we winning? Are we losing? It's color-coded. Hey, green, we're above target. We're doing what we need to do to help the business be successful. Red, hey, we're below target. We need to talk about why are we red and what are we going to do about it. We got to come up with those corrective action plans that, that say, hey, we've diagnosed performance and here's what we're doing differently with that. And I really want folks, teams, looking at their scorecards on a weekly basis so that during that week, that following week, they can make adjustments. They, there's things they can do differently to drive that metric from red to green in there. And you'll see yellow on the scorecard as well. You know, yellow is that predefined danger zone that says you're not below target, but you're you're in an area where you need to be cautious, you need to be aware of that. But the scorecard really provides meaningful data for the team on performance and are they do, doing the right things? Are they having the right behaviors in place to drive that business forward to advance it to the next level on that? Next tool I want to talk to you about is called an action register. And, and really, many times what happens in organizations is we spend a lot of time talking about what needs to happen or people say they'll do something but we fail to capture that action we fail to capture the action and then we talk about it over and over again let's talk about things one time let's document the critical task assign ownership to one person not to not to multiple people because if you assign it to multiple people it'll never get done because here's what happened michael say well i thought paul was going to do it Paul will say, well, I thought Kathy was going to do it. It never gets done. And then target dates. we got to have clearly defined target dates on our action register so people know the commitments they've made, the deadlines they have coming forward with that. And what the action register does when it comes to accountability, and, and the reason I think accountability isn't successful in many organizations is because there's not a visible tactical representation of accountability. And the action register provides that level of accountability for that team. And employees, by the way, they love the concept of accountability and the use, utilization of the action register because not only are they being held accountable, their peers are being held accountable, but also their managers being held accountable. So we've got that consistency around um, how we're managing and, and we're not managing by personality, but we're managing by process. And what this will do is it will, it will help us move the business forward. We only talk about something one time because employees know, hey, I know that I've got to follow through on this action because there's going to be follow-up at the end of the week, at the end of the month on this action. So that action register really helps drive that continuous improvement and ensure that everyone's on the same page. Here's a, a screenshot of an action register. You'll see first column, the action, what must happen, what someone says they're going to do. And when you hear terms such as, I will, someone should, let's do this, those are action terms. We need to capture that. You'll see under the applies to column. What metric on the scorecard does it apply to? Our belief in competitive solutions is that your scorecard has got to be a, a thermostat. And what I mean by that is it, it tells you the temperature, but then you need to make the adjustments. So any metric that is read on your scorecard, you've got to come up with a corrective action plan that says, we've diagnosed why we're red, and here's what we're doing about it. Under responsibility, you see one person's name. You don't see multiple names. You see one person's name there. The target date, it's color-coded. Red ones, they're past due. Yellow ones do the next seven days. So the action venture really brings visibility to the commitments that people have around that. So those are the two tools I wanted to share with you as you think about creating that culture of continuous improvement. The scorecard to measure performance. Are we winning? Are we losing? And then the action register. What are the countermeasures? What are the actions we're taking to drive the business, to drive that metric from red to green? What I want to talk about now is around a couple processes. I want to talk about communication, and then I want to talk about auditing within that. When I talk about communication, I talk about face-to-face, two-way, coming together as a team once a week for 30 minutes to talk about the business. 
again, the only thing we have in common with the people we work with is the business. So let's talk about the business, talk about how we're performing. And I'm sorry, but I think organizations have lost sight of, of how to communicate within the, in their organization. And there is a belief that email is a form of communication. I don't believe so. Email is a form of advertising. And let's be honest, do you read every single email that comes your way? You probably read the ones with a red exclamation point, but other than that, email is okay as to supplement the message, the face-to-face -face message. But again, the email relies on someone to actually read, read it. So I'm advocating once a week, 30 minutes, to come together face-to-face -to, -face to advance the business. And I ask you right now, are your meetings advancing the business, or is it just an addition to? Do you sit, sit there and look at your calendar and say, I've got three meetings to do today, and I know there's going to be three hours wasted? You need to start having better meetings and focusing on how we're going to drive it forward. And one of the ways that you can have better meetings is to have a standard meeting agenda. And here's a standard meeting agenda that many of the companies we work with utilize. And you'll see on there, here's some agenda topics they talk about, the action register, making sure me, people are meeting um, uh, their, their time frames. We're going to look at the scorecard. That's the focal point of it recognition we're going to talk about in a minute, but the pass-up, pass-down process. Let me share with you briefly the pass-up, pass-down process. Pass-down is bulletized briefing. What are three, or three, four, five things we need every employee in our organization to know about? And it may be something such as we've got a sales and marketing says we have a new customer coming in next week. It may come from quality saying we've got an audit, an ISO audit coming up or an audit from the, from the FDA or from the um, another safety audit coming, OSHA audit coming up. What are the key things we need our employees to say? And that starts with the senior leadership team, and then it cascades throughout the organization. So by 24 to 36 hours later, everyone in the organization has heard the same clear, consistent message about what's going on within the business. So the communication is key to having that change in the culture of your organization. Next thing let's talk about is the audit process. I believe you need to audit the scorecard, you need to audit the action register, you need to audit the communication to see is there consistency, is it being applied across the organization. We need to share best practices, and then we need to talk about how can we do better next time. One of the audits you saw in that standard meeting agenda was a meeting audit, talking about this meeting, how can we do better next time, but then auditing the communication process, and I know leaders and organizations that will go out and they'll ask their employees on a Wednesday or Thursday, hey, tell me one of the pass down items for the week to ensure that there's consistency, to ensure that that message is being driven throughout the organization with that. So let's talk next about the cultural shift and talk about recognition. And I really want organizations to start thinking about recognizing their employees. Organizations are very quick to run out and provide feedback when things aren't going so well. But what they fail to do, in my opinion, is provide recognition when good things are happening in the organization. And so you saw in that meeting agenda that recognition is an agenda topic. It's a mental trigger. Do we need to recognize anyone? Uh, so we, we need to start thinking about that and providing recognition for individual employees for taking action, innovating. When they come up with a great idea, let's reward them, whether it's monetary compensation or it's a, a pat on the back, a handshake, as part of every meeting. And then applaud. Let's announce and applaud again. And let's share that. Let's elevate that up within our organization via the communication process so we can pass up. I talked earlier about the pass down from the senior leader. Let's pass up to the senior leaders, people that received recognition. And then hopefully the senior leaders are, are cognizant and seeking those employees out uh, during, during the week, whether it's in the cafeteria, the break room, in the hallway, and saying, hey, saw the recognition that you received from your manager and your team. want to thank you for your contributions to our team and to our business and how it helps us. So what's next? What's the next thing? Well, it's got to be a collective mindset. It's got to be organizational wide that we say there's a better way for us to do business. We got to complete those tasks, complete our initial projects, move on, look for the next one. Keep moving forward. It's got to be authentic. There's going to be some great successes. There's probably going to be some failures as well. Let's learn from these mistakes. Let's share the best practices. Let's not keep information bottled up stay in our silos. Let's break those silos down and go out and share that information. We can be historians in our organization and say, hey, we tried that four years ago and it didn't work. Let's develop the mindset of 
from this day forward. From this day forward, this is what we're going to do within the organization. I'm going to pause here. Connor, if you would launch our third and final poll of the day, please. There you go. Ten more seconds. All right, and here you go, Seth. Thanks. Looks like a cultural uh, cultural shift. Fifty-three percent. The number one answer. So let's Let's talk about some of the outcomes and successes. And here's some of the companies that, that have embraced kind of driving that continuous improvement culture, seeing, setting in place the scorecards, having the action registers in place, having a defined communication process to really change the culture of the organization, to, to breed that continuous improvement mindset. And a uh, good friend of ours, Doug Wood out at Bombardier Learjet, PBL, the, the, the process-based leadership I talked about, really was instrumental in, in helping them with their lean systems. and. And, and helping them look for ways to to um, improve quality, reduce costs, and building of their their products. Uh, Manatee County down in Florida, they were recognized the Sterling Award given to them by the governor of Florida for for excellence and quality. One of two companies uh, in 2011 that won that award. BAE Systems um, did a lot of work with the Department of Defense. They had a communication issue in terms of um, sharing of key information. Put in place a communication process I talked about have exceeded their expectations in terms of the gains they've seen around that. So talking about this continuous improvement culture and talking about process-based leadership, results-driven, visible and audible, the scorecard, the action register, you can audit those, uh, clear understanding of goals, we're communicating to our employees, sharing them with them, here's what we need to do. We're having those meaningful discussions about what needs to happen, about what needs to get done. And we're, we're putting in place the foundation, the building block of, of changing the culture, of driving innovation, and driving continuous improvement within the organization. I've seen it work. I've been doing this for 17 years, folks. Talking about the business, measuring performance, holding people accountable, you will yield tremendous business results from that. Con, I want to pause here. Are there any questions that have come in during our time together? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we had a, a few people um, ask about those screenshots of the software that you showed, uh, two or three in there. And in particular, uh, people ask, is that a, a software that's specific to continuous improvement projects? Or maybe you can give a little background on how that came about and, and how it's used. Yeah, that, that came about from a couple of our client companies uh, frustrated with using Microsoft Excel sheets to, to measure for their scorecards and, and trying to have an act, their corrective actions in, in Microsoft Word. So we developed that. What I'm showing you there is version 3.0, which will be out later this year. It is, a, it is a continuous improvement tool in terms of it will facilitate your continuous improvement process. It integrates your scorecards. It integrates the action register. It integrates the communication agendas all in one central location so teams can come together uh, very effectively and efficiently talk about performance and talk about things they need to do. And it's called PBL Scorecard. And the website's pblscorecard.com. Uh, Connor, one more, please. Uh, sure. In the uh, section where you were talking about processes and focusing in on communication, uh, you showed a little bit of pass down. Um, and you mentioned pass up. And somebody asked about, well, what is pass up? Is that just about recognition? Or maybe you can explain the pass up piece of pass up, pass down. Yeah, the, the pass up, pass down is designed to be a two-way top to bottom, bottom to top way to, to share key information. So information flows down from the leadership team. Folks at the middle levels, lowest levels, they have questions, uh, concerns. It gets elevated up. So we're passing information up, passing information down. It's a very powerful process. And if you're tired of your employee surveys every, every year saying communication is broken around here, that the pass up, pass down is a great way to get started. Folks, I appreciate your time together. I want to wrap up and just say if you're interested in learning more, uh, spending a day, a day and a half, and, and really getting more around starting that continuous improvement journey, that culture. Uh, a couple workshops coming up in Atlanta in November. Uh, you can get those at our website. And then on our exit survey uh, that Connor will launch, you can have the opportunity to check the box uh, and ask for information on that. 
Folks, thank you very much for your time. I hope to uh, see you again in October on employee engagement.